and I will share the screen. All right, today, I'm guessing it's been a long time for many of us. Oh, you stayed up for that whole thing. I go to bed. I just can't. Well, um, because of the time zone difference, like me staying up all night to watch it, it's just like watching what most of you would watch during during the evening. I got gotcha. Did you do anything the next day? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I I usually take the next day off. You kind of have to. I mean, yeah. you just you can't be functional. <laughs> no. Really in any way. No, it's pretty miserable. I just can't. I just can't help it. Oh. I. So I, I, I burned myself on the, the whole Brexit thing because all the polls said it was going to go remain and that it, we weren't going to exit. And so I just went to bed. I was like, oh, whatever. And then I woke up and it was just like, wow. <laughs> what, what happened? happened? <laughs> Terrible. Um, and then I, yeah, since then, I just can't quite make myself just go to bed and not watch it. When there's an event like that. <laughs> all right. Well, why don't why don't we go ahead and get started? I have a I just have one item today. I, it's to me to start kind of taking a look at existing metrics that we have. Um, but Damien, you had put something in Slack. Do you want to talk about yep. this a little bit, and we could try to move this forward together? Yeah. So uh, I was in the last to do group uh, of Spo meeting. Uh, there was this conversation about uh, you know these projects like. Uh, that they move from open source to closed source, like I don't, let's say, Elastic Cash or something like that. Uh, I don't remember which was the last one. There was a more recent one. Um, they were they were discussing that in most of those cases, you notice that the contribution population changes a lot at the time. There is this. Uh, process when the company that is going to close it like it starts to be like the main contributor or or something like that and uh, what we were talking there is if there is any kind of metrics we could use to try to anticipate this from outside the the project like one of my dependencies is going to be very risky starting now <laughs> So Don, you had typed a few things in there. Are these examples of Cockroach DB where they became closed source? Yeah, I I think Cockroach DB might have been the one that we were talking about because that's the most recent one I can think of in the um that I've heard of. And Elasticsearch has gone back. They they're Yeah, but I, I was working in uh, Amazon at the time that happened, so I have the this in the head all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. The other one side was not directly affected. <laughs> yeah. So what? Okay, so we do have a couple. Um, we have a couple metrics. It's new contributors. And these are, I'm just bringing these up from the Slack conversation. Yeah, those, I found those and I think like maybe these can be combined in some way that we can model something to detect anything there, but I, okay. I don't know if, but I was just looking around what we have. Um, Is it a measurement I, of, um, do in the conversation, was it a measurement of like risk that may become evident in the project? Yeah, so what, so I don't know if any of these metrics show it anything at the time these things happen. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, so I wonder if we can look into these different projects, I don't know, far, find some examples and look into the metrics at the time this happened to see if there is some indicators there. I think maybe it's more for the modeling group, but I, read recently that we might be merging them so with this one yeah i have i have some i have some thoughts on 
on this in particular. Um, I think I think a, a key part of this is is um, so contrib contributors, yes, but I think that it's a lot of it has to do with who those contributors work for. So I think it's it's really organizational participation, which we have a couple of, of metrics around and we have a practitioner guide around organizational participation as well. And this is something that, that I've been looking at personally. I've been doing some research on license changes and forks that result from those license changes and looking at looking at what changes in in some of those in some of those projects so before and after the relicensing or um you know the original project versus versus the fork and so far the bit that i've done is the organizational participation piece um because that involves a lot of a lot of cleanup and things and then i'm i'm trying to now trying to figure out which project health metrics to look at to um, to do some of that analysis. So I, honestly, I just haven't had time because I was on vacation and then next week I'm gonna be in Vienna for Open Source Summit. Um, but this is this is something I've been thinking a lot about and I think it's I think it's pretty important. And I I feel like we probably I feel like we probably have a lot of the metrics around it. Um, the metrics that are probably important, but we haven't pulled them together in in any way to look at to look at this phenomenon in more detail and maybe yeah, I think, but, sorry i was gonna say maybe it's a metrics model maybe it's i don't know maybe some of gary's viability models might be interesting to look at in this context as well yeah i think now we have enough examples in the recent years of big projects going this way. So maybe now we can look back into those, the, I don't know, the months ahead of those projects switching. Mm -hmm. uh, something that a few years ago, we didn't have any examples. So maybe it's something to look at. Maybe yeah. we have the metrics. And we actually have some of the data sets too. So I have, I have a data set on forks. Uh, which isn't isn't complete, but it has most of the recent ones anyways, and another data set around license changes. So the license changes one, um, with the exception of the recent Elasticsearch going back, um, I, I think is reasonably reasonably up to date. But those are just just lists of the projects that have had license changes and forks. We still need to do something with with those to you know to figure it out. So it's not it's not that we have solved the problem. It's just that we're we're starting to collect some of the data that we're going to need to look at um, in order to to look at the metrics in more detail. So yeah, this is a really is a really good a really good point a really good conversation. It's something that we need to I think spend more time on. So is the, again, is the concern, so let's say that this happens in the upstream and from a company, like, what do I, what is it that I actually care about? Like, what would I want so, to see? So for example, what I would consider is if I have a, an open source project not an internal one, an, an open source project. I will consider this as part of the uh, evaluation of dependencies. Because my open source project starts to be like not so open source as soon as my dependencies stop being open source. But in, in yeah, this so from, from that standpoint, that feels like like a viability concern. Yeah. Or at least to be prepared in the case ahead. Like, okay, this is risky. I will take the dependency anyway, but I need to come up with a plan because this can blow up in a few months. Because staying on the on the fork, let's say you get a fork like many projects that 
if I forgo a stale, then I don't get security patches and I don't get everything like, you cannot stay in the last version forever. And each time you're losing against it. Uh, so it's more of a planning business decision information you, you make. In these scenarios, if there's a an open source community and I'm engaged in using the products from that community, you know, the are the things they the software they produce, and they move to closed source, is in these scenarios, is there an open source community like left behind that is still producing an open source version of that? Not everything. Not always. I think don't wrote a paper about that. Uh, depending the consumers is. So if the consumers are mostly devs, yes. If the consumers are not mostly devs and they are just final users, there is no community. Okay. Yeah. And this was, um, yeah, it's interesting. This is, this is part of why I'm kind of focused on looking at Elasticsearch and OpenSearch and uh, Redis and Valky, because if you look at Elasticsearch, um, there, there was no community outside of Elastic employees. So there were, there just weren't people contributing to the project. So the vast majority of the impact of that relicensing fell onto users and consumers. That That's where the big impact was. Whereas if you look at Redis, for example, um, <clears throat> there were a bunch of contributors and, and some maintainers making significant contributions uh, working at companies like like Amazon and Ericsson and Google and, and other other companies outside of Redis. And th that community, uh, when when they changed the license, sort of felt left behind. And that's that's why we ended up with the Valky fork under under the Linux Foundation. So in that case, there was a contributor community kind of left behind. So it had 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 this um, dual impact, both on the contributors who were contributing to Redis, who didn't work at the company, and on the consumers of just uh, of Redis. Okay. Um, those seem like that's that was that's really interesting. Um, those seem like maybe then two different things because, in the case of Redis and Valky, like I might want to understand the viability of Valky <laughs> as as an open source project. Can I continue to rely on the things that are being produced by this open source project? In the case of Elastic, when it became closed source, I wasn't at all involved in that. Was it really, was the closed sourcing this just a license change? Yeah. The license? So you can still contribute to the community and, or, it, like closed source, so it's all just embedded in the license, but I can still pull down the products like from GitHub. It's not closed source in the sense that they leave. GitHub. It was closed source in the sense that if you were going to make money from it, you cannot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so here's, here's where you have to make the distinction between a proprietary software license and um, open or closed source code because they're completely different things, right? Mm. So Elastic moved to proprietary licenses, but left the code open. Okay. So the source code is available and sure. you can you can probably, you can you could still make contributions if you wanted to, um, but the, the usage is under a proprietary license okay. with, um, with additional restrictions that made it really hard for, you know, in my case, I worked at VMware at the time and the restrictions made it really hard for us to use any of the Elasticsearch tools um, because of, of the way, uh, because of the new restrictions that were put on the license. And, and those particular restrictions were why the OSI won't approve that particular license, the, the, okay. in that case, the server-side public license. Okay. So with the questions then of viability in say like the Redis Valky situation be a little bit different than questions of viability say in the Elastic situation because in the Redis Valky, the viability might be about whether or not Valky can keep, can keep this going. Do they have enough um, like momentum and enough contributions, enough people to keep mm -hmm. producing the product that we need in the case of Elastic, that doesn't really seem to be the question at all. It seems to be, is 
with this license change, is this even viable for us as a product for our company to use? They seem like two different things. Yeah, but there was still, you know, the the open search fork. We, you know, we had some of the same concerns, right? So I, when when Amazon, when the AWS team forked uh, Elasticsearch and created Open Search, yep. um, I was kind of tangentially involved in the community to better understand what they what they were doing, and I was convinced that it was not viable, that it was not going to be successful. Um, okay early on, uh, they've, they've proved me wrong. They've made some changes that I see as promising around things like, like governance. Okay. It's still an AWS project. So it's still a corporate owned project. It's not a foundation project, um, but they've, they've made some strides in, in the right direction. So, um, so you still, even with the elastic search, if you're, if you, you know, if the restrictions are things you can't live with and you want to go with the fork, you still need to evaluate the viability of the open search fork. And that probably depends on, you know, how you're using it and what you want. Okay. So, Damien, do you think it's, it's really about that? Is understanding the viability of the open source community? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, for me, and I, I think that for everyone that was discussing this the other day, is about the evaluation of this as a dependency, not as a member of it. So <clears throat> uh, I think, yeah, it's. Because okay. I think then if that is the case, then it. It, to Don's point, I think we probably have ways to, like, we would have the point in time, which is where this occurred, yep. whatever this, this the event, um, and then looking at the pre and post, say, activity, and seeing if there's stark differences between those two time periods would seem to make the most sense to me. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm wondering, Don, what is the data science group? What's on the agenda for the data science group? I, I'm not saying just do this, but I'm wondering like if this could be part of a queue, you know, it would be something to take a look at. Um, yeah, I think we could take a look at it. I think what I probably wanna do is just get a little bit further into the the research that I've been doing on the, the relicensing and forks, because I think some of some of what I need to do next is to think about which metrics are really important and start looking at those for for the different projects and find a way to to frame that okay. so i think once i've done once i've done that work and i'm doing this work kind of in the open as part of the data science working group so that's that's where i'm providing updates on on this research and getting feedback on it as well so i think once i get a little further on that then I think it will it will also make it easier for other people to um, collaborate with me on the on the research, and I think it'll make it easier for us to come up with come up with a way to to think about this. Okay. Um, you know, unless somebody else comes up with something first, and then and then I can use that as part of part of my research. But I think we need to spend some time deciding which which metrics are going to be important to look at. And and how we want to how we want to frame that. So okay. that feels like the next step to me. Okay. Yeah, and actually, when you're and talking about be the next step in the the research that I'm working okay. on. Well, and the way that you're looking at forks or license that seems to be exactly this. <laughs> like there's some. It is. Okay. I mean, there, there's a, a license change and then a fork. <laughs> like like they kind of occur at the same time or within a a window, a short window of each other would be my guess, mm -hmm. and then. You're just kind of looking at the impacts of that. Interesting. Yeah, and what I'm what I'm hoping to do is I'm ho hoping find some, um, basically some some research, some I don't know academic research or something similar that talks about the project health metrics that might be important in in similar situations, so that I have something that I can kind of justify from a methodological standpoint. When you were at VMware and you said that. Um, open search didn't seem viable to you. What what was that? Like, why did you feel that way? Was it 
in the you mentioned governance stuff it was it was um a uh, hostility toward documenting how the project was run uh, because i i kept poking my head into the community and saying can you you know we should have some some governance and people are like no no people contribute and they'll rise to the top and then they'll get maintainer whatever and i was like well can you can you write that down <laughs> And they just wouldn't. Um, and the reason they wouldn't was because so much of the work was happening internally within Amazon. So they would say that anyone could contribute and become a maintainer, but then they would also say things like, oh, well, we decided that in an internal meeting um, that, you know, no one else could could attend because it was an internal internal Amazon meeting. And so they were frankly hostile toward um, any documentation of the governance. Uh, which to me is a gigantic red flag. So and, until until they could get over that, and they they have gotten over that. So now they have documented governance. They have steering committees made up of people outside of of Amazon AWS, and so they're they're making really good strides, I think. Um, okay. But that was that was my biggest concern was they just they wouldn't talk about governance in any kind of productive way. Okay. Which is a gigantic red flag to me. For corporate corporate owned projects, in particular, uh, that's interesting. Um, was there anything with respect to like the contribution of or the composition of the community that would have? Yeah. Been... So, so the other the other big concern I had with this was because Elastic Search was developed um, entirely by Elastic employees. AWS is kind of starting over. They did have one person who joined AWS, like like a year before the, the fork, uh, like a year before the relicense. So he used to work on Elasticsearch and he was kind of the only one who had any, any experience with the code base um, working on it from the Amazon side. So historically the forks that have been successful are the forks where the um, community contributors, maintainers, project leaders uh, moved with the fork. So, you know, you can think of um, MariaDB, that's been pretty successful. Um, LibreOffice arguably is more successful than OpenOffice ever was. But both of those projects, it was the, the project maintainers, it was the, the people who were contributing to the project who went with the fork, who created the fork. And so the open search fork was fundamentally different because it was a company saying, we're gonna, we're just gonna do this. And they didn't really have any of the expertise in the original code base it was just it was something brand new gotcha. so that was that was my other biggest concern with that um but like i said they they seem to be doing reasonably well lots of people are using it we use it within grimoire lab we're using open search yeah um yeah right. so i, I yeah i mean who, who knows because it's you know it's it's still a relatively young project it's you know a couple of years old it could still fail, but I just feel like it, it's got a lot, of, a lot more promise than I initially thought it did. That's interesting. Um, I like that idea. The image of you have the original project who does a license change. <laughs> they make some change, some fundamental change that is problematic for folks, and the majority of the contributors in that formerly open source community kind of just stick with this, <laughs> this now relicensed project and somebody is left behind and pushes the fork button <laughs> and then they have to kind of rebuild it um, without any of those core maintainers yeah and and uh, forking a project is incredibly difficult i was i was talking to one of the people who's um been kind of driving some of the open tofu stuff and and he was talking about how incredibly difficult it is to you know to do a fork and to, you know, to get, there's a lot of cleanup that you have to do. There's, um, there's just a lot of, a lot of work and it's, um, it's incredibly difficult, which is why there are a lot of forks that you just never hear about because they never succeed. Somebody, somebody says they're going to fork it and then they don't really have the expertise to do it right. and to maintain it over time. It's interesting. Damien, did you have a comment too on this? Yeah, I was going to say like, we, we don't see it in the, this license change, we probably have no real example that was big enough, but I see how this could be the same situation if someone moves from 
BST to CPL into one of the de dependencies going to have the same impact in the consumer. Um, but I didn't see one of those happening. So I don't worry about those. The other ones I see then happening more frequently. <laughs> so. So this conversation, it, it's almost, I think part of the question would be is um, with this license change, if there's a community that's say, you know, quote left behind that community that has done the fork, I think some of the questions would be is, um, are they able to lift this back off the ground? <laughs> are they this, this essentially new open source project and do they have the capability of doing that? And what would be the insight that could be provided to tell you that, yeah, this seems to be actually taking off, not whether or not it's yeah, in the, you know, license, license changes aren't new, but they've been increasing in frequency over the past, past couple of years due to, you know, pressure from shareholders and investors and, and people who want these, these companies to make money. And so it is, um, it is kind of a, the, the license the license changes have made this more prominent. So it used to be that a lot of the forks were created for other reasons. So MariaDB and LibreOffice were both direct results of the Oracle acquisition of Sun. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of there were there are also a lot of other reasons for for forks to happen, um, not just the the license changes. Interesting. Yeah, Do GCC you... fork it for a while. <laughs> What's the that? One? She received and forked it for yeah. a few years and came back. Like yeah. and it was just maintainer discussion, not. Yep. Yeah. They uh EGCS, I think, was the the fork. And they um yeah, yeah they forked for a few years. And uh, because there were strategic differences, one group wanted to take it another way, one group wanted to do something different. And um EGCS became a lot more popular. And so sort of the G GCC crew kind of came around and we're like, yeah, let's let's bring them back under under the fold. But I, I think that, you know, what they what they did was effectively bring the EGCS code um, yep. and started, you know, basically called it GCC and just kind of merged merged those back together. Yeah. There so was an interesting but complex uh problem. Yeah, I was going to say there's a lot more to this conversation than I thought there was going to be. <laughs> um, but it also makes me think that, and particularly when you talked, Don, about like the pressure to do license changes and the, because I, I agree with you on that and the impacts that that could have either with, with forking occurring or even just not even occurring. And now what do you do? Um, it might be a, this, I think this is really interesting and um, I'm really glad you're working on this as part of the data science stuff, because I think it could provide insight on um, like the scenarios that Damien is talking about. Mm -hmm. Try to help clarity there. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it'll give us a framework for evaluating, I think, other similar sort of situations. I mean, you know, I'm focused on relicensing and forks, but um, you know, like we've talked about there, there are other things that cause big disruptions and projects that can generate, yeah. generate forks. And I think if we have a kind of a framework and a set of metrics and a way of looking at this, I think this might help us beyond just my focus on forks and relicensing. Agreed. So, but it's super interesting, which is why I'm doing it because I, I find this fascinating. Um, and it's, I like it too, because it's not trying to be predictive of such a change, but it's trying to say such a change has occurred. Here's what you probably need to look at <laughs> now that this has happened. Yeah. Here's what you need to understand. Yeah. I would love to be able to predict like cool? changes and, and works, <laughs> but it's such a, it's such a rare event that I, I think, I think sadly, I, I don't, I don't think that there's a good way to do that. But it happens often enough that giving people kind of the handles by which they can look at the now changed landscape and get an yeah. understanding on it is really cool. All right, great. We can predict eclipses now. We couldn't decades ago. So why not? <laughs> we can predict. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, at some point, maybe we could. 
<laughs> if we if we could do that, <laughs> we should <laughs> <have a> company <laughs> and get rich because that would be cool. <laughs> All right. That yeah, was it was really interesting. Uh, uh, Rachel Stevens from Red Monk just wrote an article about um, the business, like financial impact on these companies that are that are relicensing. And there's uh, there's at least the ones that are public. But again, it's such a small data set. It's just like a handful of projects that have relicensed that are also where their financials are are publicly available. And um, this is the yeah, one. there's there's no no clear link between increasing value for the company. So it was a really it was a really interesting article. But again, it's it's based on you know a very small handful of projects. But it was it was an interesting read. Yeah, I guess that for example, for the case of Elasticsearch, they the bet for them was to make it proprietary so the big cloud providers will pay for it. And uh, the solution they found is like, okay, we will have our own. That's it. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. It's a great conversation. Um all right, I this is more of a less, <laughs> the next part is less interesting than what we just talked about. It's more mechanistic and I'm not going to ask that we work on these things right now, but um, we have, so for those of you that don't know, we have a, a spreadsheet that tracks a lot of our metrics work. Anything that's in green has been released and is published and um, Yiga and Peculiar, who are on this call, have been working to get these both into our new template or get all of these greens into our new template form. We've had a whole lot of metrics kind of sitting idle for a long time that are in these yellow rows, I think. Don't worry about red at this point. And so my thought was is that maybe we could kind of, as, as this group, start taking a look at even if it's just one at a time, some of the metrics that have been slowly making some progress. Um, it was just a, it was a thought to try to, to continue to publish metrics as part of this working group, because that is what we're also here to do. Okay. I see some nods. Yeah, so, that's, I think it's a great idea. Okay, so one of the first ones, so I thought maybe if if you take it okay so damien we used to have our that's these tabs on the bottom we used mm -hmm. to have different working groups that would kind of work on risk related issues evolution like the evolution of a project related issues uh, diversity equity and inclusion and things like that um so i'll finish my thought peculiar and i see your hand um, but over time um just as the chaos project has changed we've those working groups have kind of gone away and we're kind of picking that that work up here in the metrics working group. So that's what these tabs are here. So Peculiar, do you have a comment or a question? Yeah, I was kind of suggest, can I be permitted to move these greens together according to these colors together, like in this spreadsheet? What do you want to do? Like put all the greens together just at the top? Greens together, then the next colors together, and then the red colors together. So it's easy to see all public, all released, and then in progress, yeah. and then those are no, yeah. I think that would be okay. These were, like you see row 16 here, or row five. Oh, yeah. These were kind of old, um, categories that okay. we would use oh, so i don't okay. think I see that but i don't I think we really need those anymore do we because we're using we could, we could move those into a column and have a category column oh yeah and then and do. then that would that would allow peculiar to to merge them together because i i agree it would be a lot easier if we could see all of the yellows together and all of the the reds together the context tags are the category column. So the context tags basically replace the These uh, headers. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we could just get rid of those. I think so. Yeah. I think we can just get rid of them and then just rearrange. But yeah, that'd be great. So I can do that peculiar. That's no, no trouble at all. Okay. 
yeah, that's easy. Um, so then I honestly, at that point, I'm like, all right, let's just start somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, DEI, so this tab here, DEI does a lot of their own work that working group still um, meets regularly, um, and they do their focus on their own metrics. So that is not one that we would have to take a look at. So the question would be where, where do we begin? Um, and I had suggested there, this one, but yeah, Kevin. Is there still discussion about merging the metrics group and the models working group? Uh, and if that is going to happen, uh, is this a conversation we should have once the uh, those two working groups are merged? So um, that yeah, that came up last time here. Uh, the the more I've thought about it, the less I'm inclined to merge them. To be honest with you, this is just me that we have quite a bit of work to do with metrics development. And then when I we, that's fair. okay. And then when we were just in the metrics model meeting, <laughs> there's quite a bit of work to do in the model meeting. And I'm afraid if we split it half and half every two weeks, that just wouldn't give us enough time to do the things that we want to do. Yeah, I would, I would that agree with that. Big... I mean, I feel like, I feel like this meeting has, dwindled a little bit um and i think we need to revive it by actually starting to work on metrics again well, i think rather, group, really. rather than combine, I, my fear is if we combine it we're just going to not oh, develop any it's metrics just gonna go. <laughs> everything it's just going to continue to to decline but now this is this is good we've got six people on the on yeah. the call we have you know peculiar and yiga who are going through and you know updating a lot of the metrics and it just feels like now now is the time to start focusing on developing I metrics again feel the same and we've got a lot we've had just a really nice start on many of these to be honest with you yeah uh, so if i look at ratio of issues to change requests like it's you know it's not perfect <laughs> you know what i mean uh, and it's, it's still in the old template but we have a like somebody's thought about it. We have a question. We have the description. We can probably just by reading this as a group kind of figure out where this is going. You know what I mean? And I think if we if we pick the, you know, one or two metrics that we're going to work on in the next meeting and yeah. maybe mention them in the general channel and say, "Hey, Perfect. you know, the metrics development uh, meeting, we're going to talk about these two metrics if you have if you have opinions or if you want to help develop these metrics, come join us. Because Agreed. I think we, we need to hook some more people back into this meeting. Agreed. All right. Um, I, I just feel kind of random picking any of them, but what about this one <laughs> at this point? Or emoji reactions. Take a look at this column F. This means that we have a Google Doc you know, that has kind of at least started the conversation. Can you share the link to the uh, the one you showed first? That one? Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> Deleted user was quite active there. <laughs> I saw that too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there are a number of those. I mean, I, I probably show up as deleted user in a lot of them. Anything I did with my VMware account. Oh, yeah, that's true. That might have been yeah. you. <laughs> Nicole, when she left the Linux Foundation. Yep. Same deal. Anybody who leaves a company, you lose your account. We can add, add deleted user as a contributor. <laughs> <laughs> I do kind problem. of wonder who that was. <laughs> yeah, peculiar. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying, suggesting that since we're moving all other matrices into a new template, I think it will be better we use the new template while working on this one now. Oh, Instead well, of working with what we have now, and later we'll now start like moving into the new template. I'm no, thinking. we would, I think as part of update, like these are all, none of these are released. They're just in like work in progress at the moment. So part of it, if we're okay. changing the, I would put this in the new template here and now and not okay. release it as this and then put it in the new template later. I think that's what Peculiar was suggesting was that oh, we yes, should. Yes, that's what I'm suggesting. Yes, I, I agree. 
then I agree. 100%. We all agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I think all of these across risk and like common, these are all going to be in the old templates at this point. But it, it does make sense to kind of pull it together under the new template and just start, start yeah. the new work on it under the new template. I can do that. And what about actually this one? Do you remember? Oh. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> we just went back and forth over what this should be. It was so hard. Let's do it. Let's do it. Look at all those comments. I love it. <laughs> so doing it, this is one. So this is so essentially this metric is so you have a new contributor, fine. But the question is, does this contributor come back? Because if they come back, that's usually a really good indicator that they're, it's just good. It's a good thing. And so we've gone back and forth on second time contributor, regular contributor. Looks like regular contributor was in there a couple times. <laughs> so maybe this is another, let's, come on, we can do it. Let's, let's it's find connected. Out. It's connected to a few of our other metrics. So every time we have to talk about this one, we have to go back and, and think about those other metrics as well. <laughs> so what do you say? Don, you're hesitant. <laughs> I want to pick an easier one to start All right, with. Fine. Pick it. Pick it. Okay, we'll we'll stick with issue. We'll stick with this one. I'll get rid of that one. And then you pick a second one. Or somebody else pick a second one. It really doesn't we just, too much. We just do one. Just, just do one. Is that what you said, Kevin? Yes. Okay. And then I recommend we just throw this one away. The which one? Second contributors? Ratio of issues to change requests. We throw it in I the don't think uh yeah, I think we just throw it in the trash. I don't think we're I don't think we're actually measuring anything of value here. Um, because each project is gonna be you're kind of making a judgment about how the project is being run. Right. So in, in the, in the case of the one we were just looking at, there's some connection between the number of issues in the project and whether or not those issues are turned into a change request. Yeah. But different projects don't use issues that way. They might use issues to uh, manage the project in other ways. Uh, so trying to make a connection between issues in general and change requests that get made uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, unless we're trying to measure something else. I, I I think I agree with Kevin on this one because, you know, a lot of, it's fine for projects that mostly use issues to track, um, you know, bugs and new features. But a lot of projects, you look at, you know, things like, like Kubernetes and they use issues to track things like, um, you know, managing events or, you know, I don't know, things that never get turned in, turned into a change request. So there's a lot of, a lot of projects use issues as a part of a place to have process discussions, which will never be a change request. Sure. Okay. But uh, to Kevin's point, was there something we were really trying to get out of that? And maybe- I don't know, yeah. Yeah, maybe there's something else we should oh. have been measuring to get at what they were trying to achieve with that metric. Alternately, we could look at the merge success rate of a pull request. And if that merge success rate increases, if it's linked to a issue, or you could, or we could look specifically at tags. Uh, a lot of projects will use new feature request tags or things of that nature. If the, if the pull request is linked to a, uh, a specific type of tag and what that merge success rate might be. Those are alternatives, but in general, uh, if it doesn't work, I say just throw it out because we already have a bunch of other metrics and if it's important, it'll come back at some time. Okay, fair. I'd, I'd like to at least maybe try to stick with some that we have started without starting a new one at this point. What's under the, what, uh, what metrics are under the risk tab? Just, that just feels like something we've been talking about a lot within the project. Oh, 
Well, some of these look interesting. Okay. Any that stand out to you? Um, you scroll Average back age up. of bugs seems pretty easy. Yeah, we don't have a doc for that one yet, though. I was thinking pull request discussion also seems kind of right here. straightforward. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. So we don't have, we don't have a doc for that. Uh, shoot. I bet this is an ownership issue. Yeah, like if I had created that under my VMware account, that's the message you would get. We did try to fix that, but it looks like we didn't. All right, well, so much we're thwarted on that yeah. one. I um, mean, okay. There were some other ones in the next section that, that looked interesting too. Um, code complexity. What does that one look like? Yeah, I think it's... Pretty empty. <laughs> Oh this yeah, is, not off to a very good start, but there is a lot of research on that, though. Yeah, and I think uh, it's. I, I mean, think it's. Is, a, oh, sorry, Kevin. Go ahead. I yeah, I was just going to say it would be easy for us to populate based on existing yeah. research. So. Yeah, and I think it's a particularly interesting metric. I think sometimes this is the trickiest part for us. I'm not saying it's done, but just even having some text here <laughs> is a is a nice start. Yeah. And then a lot of the other, like a lot of, like this has gone away. So even some of these components have, and this would go away. Do we have one for code complexity in a PR? Like the code complexity that is coming in on a PR? Yeah. No, but that could be a filter. So this could be as, oops, like that. It could also be as found in the, what would you just call the? Code base or? Code base. Yeah. Like or you the could, main, main branch, is that what you mean? That's, yes. That's yeah, main branch. Like that. Okay. Yeah, this, this looks like a good one to work on next. Okay, right on. Perfect. You can uh, can you grab the uh, while we're working on it? Can you just drop a link to the template into okay. the top of the document? Yes. Just to, just so we can jump back and forth. Yes. Pretty fast. I will. Um, and I should probably update it here too. I, was, I knew it was in the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. A1, I'll update that too. Okay. Okay, sounds good. And to your point, Don, I'll share this with folks on Slack just so they know what we're gonna work on. And that's a, that does seem like a very approachable one too. <laughs> yeah, and it feels I feel like it's something that a lot of people would have opinions and interest in. Okay, perfect. Right on. That makes me that makes me happy. Look forward to doing that. When All right. We, uh, when we do have when we do have this metric completed, where are yeah. we going to put it? Uh, in terms of like, where is it going to live in our organizational? GitHub. Oh, good question. Can we talk about that next time? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and that's a really good point, though. And you know, so I'm I'm resist. I I am always resistant about moving things. You guys know this about me. Um, but I do I do wonder if all new metrics we develop, we should put them in a place where you know maybe eventually we move everything to that place, but maybe we start putting things in a centralized location at least for the new metrics so that we don't get ourselves into this situation. I, I think it's fair to make that decision slowly and to follow the follow the plan that Dawn has just outlined, create okay. a repository where we want to store this stuff and maybe in the future we move stuff in, but I'm not in a hurry to do that. 
I do think at some point we probably are going to need to. Uh, I, I so. kind of think so too, but by not creating additional technical debt for ourselves, um, I think this would be a good. The metrics repo is going to come back. Look at I that. Archive it. it returns. <laughs> I think we, for uh, when the project first started, I think we had like uh, a month's worth of discussions on uh, if we should have a metrics repo or not. Yeah. Then we chose not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We chose and we went not. back and forth yeah. a bunch of times too. <laughs> All right, this is great. I really appreciate the time. And for those of you that are going to Vienna, enjoy your time. I'm not going to be there. So I'm sure it's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. All right, take care, yeah. everybody. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye.